Okay guys, this is part two of refining your final pattern. Uh, we talked a little bit about making sure your seams match in <clears throat> part one, but now we're gonna take it a step further in part two and not only check our seams, but check our fit stress map uh, and strain map and see what we can discover. Okay, so we left off with all of our seams matching. So there's no more uh, red in our seams, but now let's check our stress maps and see how we are fitting on this avatar. You can find your stress maps in your 3D window in the toolbar, just under your fabric, uh, your fabric surface button. So now we see that blue and green is pretty good. If you're in the yellow and red section, then everything is kind of a little bit too tight. So I can see a little bit of yellow um, at the waistline on the seam. So that's an area of caution. Um, right here, I still see some drag lines. So I think I'm gonna make some modifications to the shape of the cap. That's telling me that the cap has too much cap in the back of the sleeve, even though it matches the cap position is not correct. So that's why you got those drag lines right there. Those are some good things to know. And um, yep, to balance your sleeve, to balance the sleeve um, left to right, even though your seams may match, which you're gonna be able to check again, remember you can highlight your seam button here to check all of your seam lengths. So once I repositioned and re-angled the seam just a little bit to help the cap shape, now I have to go back and realign my side, my sleeve inseam and uh, go ahead and make sure that they both line up and match up. And that should help the cap of the sleeve uh, to be in a better position and look less twisted at the back. So these are a couple of things you wanna go ahead and re-simulate and see how your movements are made. Now that I made the movements to the sleeve, of course, I need to fix the back armhole and make sure that my back armhole is measuring again. So most of this you saw in the first video of the series, and we're just touching a little bit more on the uh, how to relieve some of the stress and strain in your pattern. So right now I'm going to go ahead and refix the, uh, the armhole and see if I can get it to have a little bit of a straighter look for the cap and we'll be right back. Let me speed this up for you. Okay, so it's looking like our sleeve is a little bit uh, in better position, in better shape. So I just, you know, had to get that fixed. That was giving me a little bit of a pain. But um, there are other things wrong with this pattern as far as the hip width. As you can see, uh, I'm, there's a reason I'm getting those darts bunching up and those drag lines in the front. And we're going to talk about that in another video. But I will carry through with this whole pattern through the whole process without fixing it because as a special surprise in the end we're going to test our pattern uh, our new grading for the pattern on a revised pattern we're going to use the same grade rule as we use in this pattern that may not be extremely uh correct for fit so this is what what i'm saying some of the lines you can see my dart now that i move my dart I need to re-simulate it because now that I move the angle of the dart, it shows a little bit red like something is wrong. So the red of your seam map will also show in your uh, stitching. If something is wrong with your stitching or if it gets bunched up uh, in this map, you will also see that 
your uh, there's something wrong with your sewing so that's also something that it will show up so as the seams get tightened you can see uh, a little bit of the red showing through but for the most part we're in the blue and the the light green zone we have very little yellow so that just means that it it fits it's not uh, causing any uh, stress so this is the stress map and we're going to look at the strain map in just a second that's going to be the next thing that we look at and how we can tell if this pattern is ready for production or not or if we need a few little uh tweaks to iron out so i'm going to go ahead and keep my seam uh length on while i do this process until you click on another tool in that toolbar the seam uh checker will stay on so uh, that's one of the great things i like about clo right now you can see we're using a size six alvin on form uh, i didn't uh announced that in a previous video but this is the missy curvy form and like i said i like the curvy form because it kind of to me uh, resembles more of an american body and these measurements for the forms are taken from um, the astm these are alvinon's own forms they're taken from the astm measurements which come out uh, i think every four years or every two years they update it um, so right now i am checking some of these points at the waist and at the uh, the dart area just to make sure that uh, I have a better balance for my dart as you can see the waistline is a little bit low that's okay in real life you sometimes go like an inch below the waistline when you're draping uh, just so that it doesn't have too much of a high waisted look so I am leaving it there at that position uh, because that's what I desire. So guys, I am just double checking this pattern and what we can see here is that even though everything is kind of aligned, I'm still having to check my stress and my strain map just to make sure that I am within the fit range and I do have the correct amount of ease. So what we can see if we zoom back out, we're gonna see that the uh, we're gonna see that I changed my mind. Of course, this is pre-recorded. So I guess I did wanna take it up just for the video's sake. And that's where I go ahead and I reduce from the top and I add to the bottom, which is called transpose. I'm not gonna over uh, record over this part because as you can see, I did decide to make it balanced on the waistline. So now I'm going to go ahead and re-simulate that. I'm going to get it as close as possible so that doesn't change my simulation too much. And I'm going to zoom back in and you will see that the waistline is closer to where the Alvinon waist, uh, waist markers are. So that's a good thing. So that also gave me a little bit of room on the hip. If you notice, now that I've done that, the ease of my pattern is a little bit better because I followed the shape of the body a little bit better. So now I'm in my strain map. That was a stress map. This is a strain map. So the strain map is showing me something different. The strain map is showing me that there's something a little off with my shoulder. Now I can see from the seams that my dart lengths are correct, but my shoulder slope is not even. The shoulder slope at the front, of course, is even, but where it splits in the back, there's either an issue with the sewing, which we're gonna see in a sec, or there's an issue with the, uh, the length between the two. So I'm gonna go back and check the back side once we simulate this and see if that little yellow dot, the little yellow dot on her shoulder is showing me that there's something a little bit off about it. So we're trying to get rid of that. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time getting rid of that. But what I can see and tell you from now is that the slope of the shoulder is incorrect on one side. So it's actually going up and it's actually causing a bit of a curve on her shoulder seam, which that should be straight. So right there in the middle, I have to do something to achieve straight line. These are the things you need to do in order to figure out if your pattern is going to match up when it's sewn, if your pattern is going to match uh, you know, having the appropriate ease, the appropriate dart length, appropriate seam lengths, all of that kind of stuff. So let me speed this up for you.
Okay, so that was me straightening out the shoulder and fixing the seams and making sure everything matches again. The reason I speed these things up is because, guys, this is not a one, two, three, I'm done kind of thing. You have to check and recheck. This is what pattern makers do, even in 3D. 3D is an excellent tool for helping you to visualize the issues you may have with your pattern. This is the other side to the glamorous 3D, uh, <laughs> the glamour side of 3D where, you know, you have all of your trims and all of your flowing fabric and your model simulation. This is actually making a garment that will fit someone in the real world. So this is an exciting thing that we're doing here. And I still have some problem with my darts. Yeah, the darts looking crazy. But we're going to go ahead and um, make sure that <clears throat> we have the right angle to our, to our darts. Like I want this dart to come in a little bit, make it more lower and out. So the, this is pre-recorded, guys, but sometimes it's good to see yourself uh, to see yourself doing it and then narrate it. Uh, because sometimes you cannot vocalize the decisions that you'll have to make when creating something like this, uh, you know, truing up a pattern or creating a good fitting pattern. So I got some of the bubble out of the dart. Um, this software is known for having bubbles in the darts <laughs> because it doesn't sew it flat. There is a steam uh, button that you can use, and I strictly say use it for presentation. Um, it's its own monster. You know, you have to really know how to use the steam and how it affects your fabric. So right now I'm not using any other tools, but trying to manipulate the fabric uh, so that it doesn't have those those uh, pointy little dart things. But I'm just going to recheck stress and strain and fit. So there are no uh, markers on here now, which is good news. So that means if someone puts this pattern on, they're not going to be like, why is my shoulder digging in? Um, sleeves back, but we still have that bubble in the back. So I want to go ahead and see if I can go ahead and uh, fix that bubble uh, below the armhole length. So right now I see that I, I want my armhole to stay the same because I just fixed it, right? But what is it that I need to do to uh, go ahead and fix this? So now I have my, chain, my check sewing length on. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to remove some of that bubble from the back. Basically, I will be lower fixing the, the side seam curve because that curve at the under bust, or I should say at the side seam under the bust is very curved. So I'm going to do some straightening there. I'm going to do some movements to the back and I will put some tool tips here, but we uh, we're going to speed this up a little bit. Okay, it looks like I had to push some of that uh, into the top of the dart and into the back waist, giving it a little bit more of a concave shape in order to get some of the excess out from the waist. Um, I like where the back neck is, I like where everything else is, so I chose not to remove it from the top part of the garment like I usually do. So right now, um, 
I'm not too crazy about the way it's shaped in the back, but it did get rid of that bubble. And this is something I can smooth at a later date and make sure that it works. So right now I can see that I have a little bit more stress. Now that I helped move uh, some of the shoulder out, I do have a little bit more stress under the arm. And that is just from the back, actually. I believe it's more so in the back on the back piece at the underarm than it is on the front. I don't even see it on the front. So it is from the back piece, but that will require me to do more balancing. And for this video, I decided not to go with it, I think. But um, I've been known to change my mind midstream. So let's see. Um, but I think I wanted to see if it is consistent once I start grading everything. So I did make the decision to leave it there. The little red dots that you see there, that is because of my sewing line. And that is something I talked about earlier, that that will give you an indication of your sewing line not being uh, even. So those little dots right there mean either my sewing is not even or uh, just because it's a little dot and not going over the whole seam that means there's something wrong with my sewing that's connected to that area. So those are things you can look out for when you're reviewing your stress and strain map. It will teach you about your sewing, if you're, your sewing is good or if your sewing has some issues. So it's not just for fit and for pattern, but it's also to show you uh, this is what's going on with your seams. And that's it for this video.